everybody, it's Amy Astro here and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to continue on with the Celestron Star Sense Explorer Dobsonian build. In the last video I assembled the entire unit. In this video we're going to cover loading the software, the app on our telephone. We're going to align this telescope with a distant object, get rough focus, and then we're going to take it out underneath the stars. So we've got a lot going on, so let's get to it. be honest here this video was probably two months in the making why well the weatherman does not cooperate in fact the weatherman just blatantly lies when he says we're gonna have some clear skies but that's Georgia in the summer we have lots of pop-up storms I have lots of humidity and lots of fog so bear with me if it seems like it's just a little bit choppy we're gonna make sure we cover all the topics but the first topic is we need to load the app on our telephone so let's get that loaded. So I'm over here on my telephone and we're going to the app store and we are going to search for the Celestron StarSense Explorer app. And you can see that I've already loaded it once. So we're just going to go ahead and open it, but downloading it is very easy. Now what's really cool about this app is it gives you very clear instructions on how to get started. It walks you through step by step on attaching your telephone to the telescope. It shows you how to line up your telescope and there's little videos along the way that show you step by step on what to do. So there's really no guesswork. It's straightforward and even if you put this away for a while and you come back to this, it shows you again how to set everything up so you don't have to worry about, well, what if I forget everything? Now, you remember that little card that came in the box? Well, it has a code on it, and that code is what you need to activate the app so you can use it the first time. Okay, the next step is we are going to mount our camera on here, and we're gonna focus on a distant point and I chose the distant point to be a dead tree at the end of my yard and that worked out really well but as you watch this section of me doing that keep in mind this was just a very rough focus and a rough alignment what you really need to do is do that rough during the day leave everybody leave everything sitting out and then come back at night when you're ready to view and fine tune that on a noticeable star or planet like Jupiter or Saturn, something that you can find very easily in the sky. Because me aiming at the top of a tree, which was about this big around, to me going for a grain of salt amongst that, I did find that my alignment was slightly off. Now, I could shift either direction, not very much, and I was on a star, and it was really quite special. When you received this Dobsonian, it comes with a sheet in here that has a code on it that lets you get into their software. Now, don't lose this because you're going to need it in the future. But we're going to go over here to our StarSense app, and I'm going to go ahead and type in my unlock code. All right, it wants me to choose my scope model. There we go. It is the 10 inch Star Sense Explorer Dobsonian. And I'm going to unlock it. And I must have had a typo. Isn't that how it always works? There we go. I finally got it unlocked. And what turns out, what looked like were all capitals on here were actually all lowercase. So keep that in mind. Now it says my star sense code succeeded. Uh, star functions are now en enabled. Great. To do this video, I decided to add one more item to this build just so you could see what I see. So I picked up the next YZ 
phone adapter, the smartphone adapter, and it clips on to the eyepiece. So when I see something, you're going to see it, and that's just going to make life a whole lot easier. Now, it's really cool because it adjusts, you know, right here, it clamps onto the eyepiece, and then there's a screw on the back that I can tighten it down onto the eyepiece. I can also raise and lower the platform so it gets down to the eyepiece. And then there's another knob here that will help me shift my, my X axis and stuff so I can align everything to the eyepiece. I mean, it's just, it's really a slick little device, but let's get it installed real quick. So I'm just gonna take the clamp and I'm gonna clamp it onto my eyepiece and I'm gonna tighten it down so it doesn't go anywhere. I'm just gonna take the eyepiece off and I'm gonna grab one of my smartphones here. I had to borrow one. And we are just gonna attach it just like so. All right, let's take the cap off. So I'm just gonna shift this camera back and forth so that it's centered over the eyepiece. All right, so there we have it, just about centered. And we're gonna take the focuser and rack it completely in. And now I'm gonna to attempt to aim this towards that tree or in the general area for right now. And I'm gonna do that just by putting my cheek up to here. And I'm going to tilt it down until I think I'm in something that I can catch focus with. There we go, I'm starting to see some trees here. Let's start with this. And I am rolling the focuser out. And you can see that's pretty darn good. But let's see if we can find that dead tree. That looks like a power line, another power line. So I'm going in the right direction. And bingo, there's the tree at the end of the driveway. So I'm gonna go ahead and see how sharp I can get that focus. And I'll be honest, that looks really good. But notice that it is coming from the top of the image down because with this mirror, everything has been inverted. So don't be surprised if when you're right at the top of the tree line and the trees are coming from the top down. That's just the way telescopes work. But when you're dealing with deep space, it really does not matter at all. So now that I have this telescope aimed in a certain direction, what I need to do is fine tune the red dot finder and that's on the other side. Now the red dot finder has electronics on it and all I have to do is turn it on and it will give me a set of red crosshairs. Then I wanna adjust this X, Y axis on here so those red crosshairs are now in the center of that tree that I can see through my eyepiece. All right, and that looks great. That was really easy to do, just shifting the knobs back and forth. But always remember to turn the red dot finder off because it is running off of a small battery. Now that we have all of these lined up, let's go ahead and put our main camera on that's gonna help us find the stars. And we have to take off this front cover right here. There we go, it was pinched in. And this is covering a large mirror on the inside. Now we're gonna take our phone that we have preloaded the star sense on. And let's go ahead and open up the app. Let's see, ready to observe, tap icon to start below. Let's go through the alignment process. Would like to access my camera, yes. And actually you can look through here and you will see on the mirror where your camera is lining up to. Okay, so this is what it is seeing. Now, to get this aligned, we need to aim at something that we're positive. When we see it through the eyepiece, that's what it is. Now, I could take one of these distant pine trees, but you know, a pine tree is a pine tree. They all look about the same at the top. So what I'm gonna do is I have a uh, 
a dead tree right there at the end of my driveway. And that's pretty obvious. And that's just far enough away for me to do my alignment with and get my rough focus. So when I do get a clear night, I am ready to get started. Now the final thing is, is we finally got this out underneath the stars. Now I've taken it out two or three times well, since I did the original recording of this video, which you guys have not seen until just now. But here's what I want to let you guys know. This is a great little Dobsonian. I was really impressed with it. I can see myself enjoying it. So let's just chalk one up for Celestron. They were right. I do enjoy visual astronomy. But with the 25 millimeter lens, the eyepiece. I want you to keep in mind when you think about a camera. 25 millimeters is like a wide angle lens. So I'm seeing a pretty good chunk of the sky. Now if I want to home in on something that's much smaller, let's say I want to home in on Jupiter or um, Saturn, a planet, I need to get more focal length. I need to look at a 75 millimeter, an 80 millimeter, a 100 millimeter, whatever they make in eyepieces. Not exactly sure what they are, but I know they would be a larger number, which will take my field of view from here to here and will make the object much larger in the telescope. Now, with the 25 millimeter eyepiece, Jupiter in the whole frame, if you imagine this is your frame, Jupiter was like my pinky in the center, but I could see all four moons, and that was really cool. Saturn was just a little bit smaller. Imagine, well, Imagine if I had half a pinky here or, you know, it, it, but the rings, I could see the rings. I could see through the rings. Now I couldn't see the Cassini divide or anything like that. I would need more magnification for that. So when you buy this, understand that it comes with one eyepiece. You're going to want to add more eyepieces so you can see a whole plethora of items in the deep space sky. Okay. So just keep that in mind that you're going to want to add to this and I already want to add to this and I will be adding to this very, very soon. Another thing I noticed was clearly when I take a picture versus what I see through the telescope are two different things. You know, your eye can see just so much. The camera with a long exposure picks up so much more detail. So understand that Andromeda, while I was really impressed that I saw it. It was a fuzzy target. And they always joke between photographers and visual people because the photographer sees sharp and crisp and the visual people see soft and fuzzy. But that's okay. It's two different categories of seeing. I really enjoyed how easy this was to use. It moved up and down, right and left real easy. Once I took it off this wheel base that I put it on so I can bring it in and out of the garage. And that was helpful. I do need a larger base though because the wheels are precariously on the edge of this wheeled setup. So I need to fix that. But the app, oh my God, that app was so easy to use. Once I said I wanted to see Andromeda, I followed those arrows, homed right in. The, the whole app, it went from a little circle with arrows to this, this green rectangle around it. It said, you're on it. And once I fine-tuned my alignment to a star and I looked, I was on it. I mean, it was so, so easy. Really, this is a great telescope for somebody that just wants to set up in a few minutes and uh, look at a few targets. So that's what I've got to say about this. This was a win, challenge, Celestron won. They nailed it. I am going to look at getting more eyepieces to add to my collection. And while I'm taking pictures, I'm gonna be outside on the patio also looking at the stars and doing both at the same time because I just think it'd be really, really fun. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I apologize for the long gap between videos. I'm here. I'm working really, really hard. I am getting ready to start my observatory series. So stay tuned for that. It's going to happen. In fact, so close that concrete's getting poured next week. So guys, I'm Amy Astro. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget, 
to like, subscribe, share with all your Astro friends. I need each and every one of you guys. If you're feeling adventurous, join me over on Patreon. I do post some things over there. Not as often as I should, but what Patreon is doing right now is it's helping me fund my observatory. Won't lie, but once my observatory is up, I'm clearly going to have a whole lot more data for you all to enjoy. Well, guys, thank you so much, and don't forget, I love each and every one of y'all. Goodbye, y'all.